Okay, this is an update on my um, uh, Pico uh, PC card project. Um, I'm uh, looking to make it available. Uh, I need to finalize the uh, plastic case that goes over the uh, the back of the card here. Um, uh, I've, I've included a link to a questionnaire in the description of this video. And I'm, I'm hoping to get an idea of how many people are interested in cards and what configuration of a card they're looking for so I can get an idea of, of you know, how many and what type of these, uh, these uh, shells I need, to, I need to get made. So, um, so this is the, the base card. It's a Type 2 5-volt 16-bit PCMCA card, or sorry, PC card. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a Pico sticks out the back. Um, you can ignore these. These are just for uh, debug. Um, and in this situation, um, it would essentially be a, a cover just like one of these traditional, you know, Wi-Fi cards um, from the past. So there'll just be a plastic uh, case, and it will cover will cover the Pico. It will just leave the USB uh, exposed, um, and uh, you know, a little hole to access the reset button for reprogramming the Pico. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, so and now in this mode, um, the card emulates by default. It emulates an any two thousand network card. Um, so that's basically uh, compatible with um, any any device. Um, it's um, any device that has a PC card socket almost certainly supports a um, an any two thousand uh, PC card. So you can pop this card into uh, anything, and it should detect and use it without any need for any special drivers. So that's you know on Windows, Windows 95, DOS, OS2 Warp, uh, Windows CE, um, you know the HP, you know, you know anything with a PC card. And if it doesn't have built-in drivers, which is rare, there will be drivers available um, because it's somebody used any 2000 on it at some point. Um, so that covers the, the networking. It can also emulate a, a serial modem, um, which is also universally um, uh, supported. So it will appear as a Hayes compatible uh, modem, um, and it's just there will be like you know your typical you know you know ESP thirty two style type modem where you're gonna plug this in. It'll look like a serial port, and you can use AT commands. Um, you can connect to the uh, um, connect to the the network and and telnet and whatnot. So all the the WPA2, WPA3, all the wireless happens on the Pico. So the host it doesn't know anything about wireless. It doesn't need any kind of special wireless support. Um, now in DOS, um, it will also emulate a Sound Blaster uh, and a Yamaha OPL chip. So um, that gets you. Um, uh, gaming in DOS with sound, and it works with the majority of games. Like it works with Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, Warcraft, Jazz, Jack Rabbit, uh, Tarion. Um, you know, it works with uh, most uh, uh, demos. Um, so it's it's fairly it's fairly compatible. Um, the the idea there is, you know, uh, it doesn't support Windows for for the sound right now. Um, it's because I don't think that's really a, a needed feature. It, it certainly could be developed to support Windows, but the idea is if you have an older laptop that's, you know, otherwise would have been an, is an amazing uh, gaming uh, DOS gaming machine because it has a 640 by 480 display and, um, you know, you know, you know, a decent class 46 chip or whatever, um, but it doesn't have Sound Blaster support. This will bring you Sound Blaster support. If you're running in Windows 98 on a, a little bit newer machine. You there's are some other options, you know, for sound that are maybe better. I don't know. Um, I, eventually, I do want to emulate a, a a Windows sound card, but right now it's just the the trick is it emulates a Sound Blaster in DOS, um, and of course the audio only comes out of uh, Bluetooth in this situation because you have no headphone jack. So um, you will get uh, Sound Blaster. DOS Sound Blaster gaming out of Bluetooth on your on your laptop, um, and um, there's a possibility for um, uh, USB uh, joysticks and mice off the USB port. Um, 
I'm waiting for the uh, Pico Gus to become mature with that, and then I will hopefully we can adapt the Pico Gus code um, over to this. Like already, this the the OPL uh, emulation on here comes from the Pico Gus, um, and that's the the nice thing about this is um, various Pico projects. The code can be can be traded. Um, the Any Two Thousand code I got working on here um, is now in use on the Pico Mem. So um, as each project develops some particular features, there's some, there is some interchangeability um, um, between them uh, with minimal work uh, usually. Um, so that brings me to, you'll see there's, um, there's some uh, pin headers, some low profile pin headers here. And the idea of that is uh, for optional add-on boards. So I've made one board here so far. It's uh, an audio board. And what it gets you is a, um, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you get an analog volume control, and you get a micro SD card um, socket. And then so there's a, there's a headphone amplifier which, which drives this headphone jack. There's an I2S uh, DAC, uh, same one used on the Pico Gus. Um, there's a, uh, a Dream SAM 2695 general MIDI chip. Um, and then there's a PS RAM. Um, so the idea of the PS RAM is to, to support potentially, um, running, um, uh, Gravis ultrasound emulation on here. Um, it, that's a possibility. Um, you know, there's, because it's possible to, to interchange code to the other Pico projects. Uh, I hope to see that at some point. Um, and the, 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 uh, the the Dream MIDI chip is driven by uh, an, an, an intelligent mode MPU 401, which is also something that came from the uh, the, the Pico Gus. So I may, I was able to you know interchange code from the Pico Gus onto this card. Um, so basically, this just um, clips on top, and now now you have that functionality on here. And in this situation. Um, the the case is going to be something more like uh, more like this because you need you know you know you need these headphone jacks uh, well one headphone jack and a volume and a thing so it'll be a case something more like this um, and uh, and then yeah you also have um, the micro SD the intended use is for uh, CD ROM images um, to emulate um, an Atapi uh, CD ROM uh, interface. Um, with CD audio output, um, it's not working fully today, but it, it will be. It will be working um, at some point. So my question here is to determine, you know, who's lo who would be interested in just a card because they just strictly are after the uh, the networking capability, and who would be also looking for some audio uh, functionality. Um, the audio stuff I've mostly already demonstrated. I'll just do some quick demonstrations here, but I'll. I will do some more detailed uh, videos uh, about the functions of this after, and I also will get some prototypes um, to a couple people that can also help uh, uh, do some test to some further testing. But um, but basically, um, I can just show off a couple of the small things here. So um, I just have it plugged into. Uh, this is a PC, IBM PC 110, so this is just a 486 SX33, um, and um, the first uh, I'll do is I'll I'll boot up with card services enabled, um, and uh, if I go to Easy Play, um, you'll see that the card uh, it, it it thinks that it's a it's an Ethernet card. So if I um, if I pop it out here. Um, see it's not there, and then if I just uh, push it back in, and there it is. So th that now um, it thinks that it's an Acton card. So I just use the uh, Acton um, Acton drivers there, and then um, this is typically what I use. Um, um, oh, sorry, I don't know uh, um, an address offhand here, actually. Let me just look one up. Um, I typically um, 
do um, uh, Novell networking. Um, but you could use this with a, a packet driver and use um, use MTP, um, which is what most people will do. But this is me just this is me connecting to a uh, a network server um, over the uh, over the internet, um, and that's that's basically that's the uh, the 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 wireless. Um, now, um, I will reboot and I'll show you. So when you're in card services mode and it's looking at exact cards, that's fine. I usually use card services, but it can use up a lot of memory. So for some DOS gaming, sometimes you're going to want to do no card services. Um, and so I have a, a small program um, that I run, which um, configures and enables the card. Um, and now it's a, it should, uh, it should see, um, it sees the, the DSP there. Uh, I could turn that up a little bit. And, uh, basically, um, it's now a, uh, you know, you can use the MPU 401. song um or you know you know there's the various games that do uh, sound blaster <laughs> um or um doom uh, let's see i have doom I'll, i can show off doom initially um we can do it with uh, ad lib for the um the audio and again this is all um, coming from this chip. So that's with um, uh, Sound Blaster and um, and uh, FM sound, um, but we also have the option to do the uh, General MIDI, which will now use the MPU 401. Uh, and it will send the uh, music to the uh, Dream Chip. about the, the recording volumes there but um uh yeah and it, it basically it can do the uh sound blaster and networking at the same time um basically because we're running in this other kind of um hybrid mode where it's lots of different cards um in this case you just use a standard any 2000 driver um uh, and it just it sees it uh enabled um and uh yeah i mean uh um Tarion has, you know, the uh, FM audio. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically uh, it for now. So again, I basically, I just need um, some help to, um, you know, figure out exactly how many cards, uh, you know, what kind of volume of cards I'm looking at so I can, you know, I can decide what to do. And again, um, you know, the idea here is because it's a, this is, a, you know, an open source project, um, you know, and there's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, possibilities for different types of functions that I didn't even think of. Um, you know, the idea is that this, um, you know, you can make these different boards. Um, and so again, because again, because the Pico, it's a, it's a, has a CPLD that bridges from the 
PCMCA to the Pico, um, we have most we have all the PCMCA signals uh, to the CPLD, and we have all the GPIO signals to the CPLD. So you know from you know from that um, that chip there, you can you can use JTAG to reprogram the CPLD, um, and you can you know reconfigure how the Pico is connected to the the PCMCA bus. So you can decide, you know, if you don't want to, you know, do you want to do 16-bit mode and latch the upper bit in the CPLD? You can do that. If you don't, if you just want it to be 8-bit, you can do that. Um, if you want, if you need to free up more GPILs, you can do more multiplexing at the at the expense of speed. Or if you you need less, you know, because for example, this card, um, this add-on board, you know, we need, um, you know, we need SP, SPI. Uh, a clock and uh, uh, TXRX. We need a, uh, a chip select for the PS RAM. We need a chip select for the SD card. We got the three the uh, three signals for the uh, for the uh, audio DAC. Uh, we need a signal for the, the MIDI. So we have to use a whole bunch of GPIOs that we that we don't connect to the PCMCA bus PC, uh, PC card bus because we need them for our peripheral card. If we have no peripheral card, then well, we have to do less multiplexing, and we can reprogram the CPLD as we desire for that. Um, can also um, do situations where um, you know this is the this is the card I designed because this was seemed to be you know met most the requirements. Um, you know, there's only so much space. But for example, you know, if you dropped the uh, SD card um, and PS RAM. Um, you could put a real uh, Yamaha OPL3 chip on here, and because you can reprogram the CPLD, you don't you don't need to get a new card. The card can get reprogrammed to, and now it can support a OPL3 add-on board. Um, you know, you could have a board that has an analog joystick control. Um, you know, you you can have um, you can even the this the switches here are. One of the switches is to actually disable the Pico. The main intention for disabling the Pico is for um, situations where you're doing JTAG reprogramming. You can you can uh, pull the run line down and keep it off. But that also even gives you the option where you can actually completely disable the Pico and use all the signals. So you know you could have a card that was just um, you know some other kind of reference design of something that you want to play with. And it's but it's connected directly to the uh, PCMCA bus, so a lot of flexibility. Um, um, being open source, um, I think that the and that's why you know this is called the IBM uh, credit card for Ethernet. So this is a real card, and that's kind of where I modeled the uh, kind of my little look. But I call mine the credit card adapter for everything because there's there's very few things that this won't be able to do with um with help from the community the different uh you know code that we can uh, write for it so check out my uh, questionnaire link um and and uh, if if this is something you would be interested in uh let me know um i i have a lot of components already so you know i'm looking at you know i could start to uh deliver these in um you know 30 to 60 days um but I, I do need to get some idea of of um, the uh, quantity so I can uh, make some uh, make some other arrangements for for the manufacturing. So um, uh, yeah, check out that link and uh, if you um, I also have a little uh, box in there. Um, if there's any other features you think that you would like to see this card have in the future, you can put them there or you could comment. Um, I always check that out. And uh, yeah, I'll post some more. Uh, technical uh, videos in the future about you know how I got how I got here from you know you know starting off with uh, you know you know this was the uh, the Wi-Fi card I demonstrated uh, well to 2022 quite some time ago you know or these you know some of these very early boards where I was just trying to you know this is 2021. You know, I was just trying to even figure out, you know, what is even PCMCAA, and you know, I was using flash chips for the card information structure, um, and uh, you know, things just um, just kept uh, kept expanding, and then I started building um, 
you know, I had to start building tools to allow me to, you know, um, uh, basically, you know, tools like this where I could, uh, you know, I could put, you know, uh, you know, real cards, um, you know, in here and intercept all the traffic and I could watch, you know, how do these, how do the cards function? What are they, what are they doing? So, you know, I'll put this into the laptop and then I'll, and then I'll watch on the logic analyzer. I'll capture all the signals so I can, I can look for any kind of initialization, you know, registers that it wrote that, you know, weren't documented. Um, and I can really create a, uh, um, as close as possible emulated card. Um, so that's it. That's where I'm at. Um, and, uh, Oh, I know this was a long video. I'll try to put some uh, chapter markings, and I'll, uh, I'll look forward to seeing uh, some some comments and submissions on this. Uh, thank you.